Hey, Neil McDonald here. In these videos, I'd like to try to give you some uh, insight into how I do my job when I'm supporting my customers. And so this is a raw video. I'm not trying to make it anything perfect. I'm just adjusting my screen here as I talk to you. Um, but the idea of these videos is to walk you through what I do when I'm trying to uh, do my own research on, in this particular case, this video is about researching uh, before a cold call. So um, I set up an introduction meeting or my customer did, and we want to go in and talk to this point of contact, this small business specialist in this particular case, and you'll see this person's information. Anyways, we want to go in and have the meeting. We want to be very prepared so that they know we're prepared. That's the first step. And then the second thing is that um, we know what we want to ask. When you go into a call, any sales call, you want to have a successful sales meeting, not a, um, a great sales meeting. And so if you haven't heard me say this before, a great sales meeting is one where you're connecting with the other person, you guys are talking, uh, it's all going really well, but nothing comes of it. There's no tangible action. So a successful sales call or, or phone call or meeting or anything, a successful one, is one that has a specific um, next step because we're all in sales. If, if you're watching this video, this is GovCon um, sales or business development capture, whatever you want to call it. And so you need to be moving forward from the very beginning of I'm interested to here's the money for the contract, right? And so how do you get between those two points is what I want to talk about today. In partly I'm going to be talking about, but most importantly, when I say successful, it's about moving you forward towards that contract win and the revenue, et cetera. Um, so in this case, let me set this scenario and I'm going to share, um, I'm going to share my screen. So let me just share this and hit share. Um, so I think I minimized that. Okay. So let's start here. I'm pretty much going to use two, I think two, um, screens. This, this one is I'm in word and I'm using what I call my, um, let me move that back up here. Uh, this is my call plan sheet. I use this with my customers. You know, it's freely available out there for you. I've done videos on how to do cold calling. But most importantly, when you do a meeting or a, a phone call, you want to have a call plan sheet of some sort. This one works for me. And, and as I continue with other people and I watch how they use my tools, I refine it a little bit. Um, I've been doing sales for 30 years and sales within the government for 20 years. So um, I'm used to a lot of things that are second nature for me. What I try to do with these tools is make them useful to you and to others who perhaps don't have as much experience. Okay, so you can see here, and um, you'll see the person's name and information. Let me kind of just scroll in for a second. Um, I don't mind showing it. Doesn't matter to me that you see this person. Uh, their information that I'm putting right here, it's sitting on the internet. It's how we got that information. So this is just a particular small business person in the army. You can do the same thing with anybody out there. Um, the scenario today that I'm working on is uh, for an IT customer of mine. And so I want to help them be able to go in fully prepared. Um, and so you'll see me thinking about this, but I could do the same uh, work or preparation if it was construction or um, you know, program management, finance, whatever. Okay, so in here, um, there's certain sections that I use in a call plan sheet. Don't worry too much yet about what all the words are, because I'll come back to that um, as we go along. This will be a, a decent length video. Um, again, it's about being me being raw. I want you to see how I do research. I have not researched this person at all. Um, so I'm hoping this is a good one for you that you see, you know, I'll be following this like a maze. Sometimes I go down a maze the wrong path and I just hit a wall. It's no big deal. You turn around and come back to the known good point you were at and you pursue a different lead. Um, by doing this, you'll find information out. Okay. So this is, um, uh, Inger, uh, I'm, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce her name. I wish, wish I could find a video that helps me pronounce it before I get there. But um, they're in the army in this command. You can see the lifecycle management command. Um, and so the first thing I do is put my basic contact information there. I want uh, m either me or my customers who are doing the call, I want them to have the basics of anything related to this call in this one sheet, which allows them to be fully prepared. So you can imagine taking this into a meeting with you or being um, on the table in front of you while you're doing a phone call. I'm gonna grab some water here. Um, in a meeting, it's really helpful because I'm not gonna go too far into it today, but when I coach people on how to use a call plan sheet, I tell them to tell the other person that you have this sheet. I took the time to prepare a, a sheet, a plan sheet, so that I could make sure I'm asking you the right questions. So I got a handful of questions here. 
when they hear this, the person on the other side of the table is going to want to help you complete your list. They're going to think to themselves, oh, they got a checklist. Let me help them check it off. Um, so it's a great thing to have. And when you're in a meeting, you just put it right down in front of you and say, I got this list. I've been in meetings more often than I can tell you where the person says, did you get all your questions answered? I'm like, oh, let me look, you know, give me a second. And so that's, that's great stuff. Anyways, um, top section is just the basic contact information, right? When's the meeting? The um, second part I do is introduction. I hate talking about people's kids, golf, any of that stuff that I find in their office or when I'm calling them. I'm not trying to build a personal friendship, but you do need to break the ice a little bit, right? I, I, uh, I find it disingenuous when people uh, try to befriend me about my little interests and then they move on and never talk to me again. I'm like, well, why'd you waste my time? You know, if you asked me about that little thing and then you followed up and we went golfing or something, we became personal friends, it was great, families met, that's awesome. But a lot of people try to, um, you know, this is old style selling when you, um, you, you know, you try to build this personal connection. It's like, you don't have to build a personal connection. You're selling them something they need, theoretically, and they're evaluating you. So, so you wanna as quickly as possible get to the meat of a meeting. But the reason I use this section at the top here, you can see introduction talking points, is I wanna be able to just say um, something that gets it rolling. And, I'm, and again, I'm not gonna tell you how I do, I mean, the purpose of this video is not for me to tell you about how I do my cold calling. Um, that's in different videos. But I, I write down some talking points. And the reason this is important is it helps me um, not wing it, but make sure I know something that I can say right at the start of the call that breaks the ice, warms us up. An example of a call we did uh, uh, earlier in the, this week with a different customer was, uh, hey, met you at a Nashville event, right? And, and so we could talk about that Nashville event. Uh, you know, we really found it valuable. I hope you found it valuable as well. Yeah, it was good, you know? And so you got like 30 to 60 seconds of chit chatting, but you're connecting back around that Nashville event or whatever. Um, for me, I don't have, so this isn't completely filled out at the moment. I've got some um, sample content that I put in but mostly I'm gonna be looking for what could I say that might be good. So an example is um, sometimes when I do my research, I find somebody has done a video. It's like, hey, I watched your video. You know, so you, know, you, can, you can open or break the ice that way. Uh, okay, so that's introduction talking points. It's just to break the ice. It's that first two minutes, three minutes onto a call. The purpose of the call and the meeting objectives are so vital to me. When you go in, you need to know why you're having this meeting. Um, and so for me, I like to write down exactly what it is. Now, uh, the purpose and the meeting objectives generally are the same for first meeting introduction meetings. I want to know about you. I want to make sure you know about us, blah, blah, blah. So um, I put that in. When I do my cold calls, then I, I say it specifically. It's like, hey, I'd like to tell you from my perspective, the purpose of this call is this. And what I'm hoping to get out of it is this. Is that okay with you? And when I say that with the person on the other side of the phone, they're able to, to understand what I hope to get out of this and participate in that, uh, those meeting objectives that I have. And almost always they will follow you through to try to get to that point. Um, okay, and then, uh, so the last two are initial questions and additional questions. In selling, you need to um, understand what you're trying to learn. You're not selling a small business specialist. You're not selling a contracting officer. You're not selling anybody. The only time you're really closing the deal is in your proposal. All the time before the proposal, you're gathering information. You're trying to understand certain things. Well, when you do an introduction call like I'm doing today or you know, planning for, for today, really I'm just trying to understand more about, you can see that first question, right? How are our services procured? Um, I can go to FPDS and I can go to some of these other places and you'll see me do some of that research. But, but when you get a chance to talk with a small business specialist and they can answer some of these questions directly for you, it moves you forward a lot. So um, let me pause here for a second and just look at some of these questions. So how, how are our services procured? That's a really important one. I did a video before where the video production services one of my customers sells is actually procured under a much larger contract. We learned that through a meeting like this and we're then able to pursue the prime who has that contract and see if we can turn that into business. Um, I'm a big fan of asking for documentation that they might have. An example of documentation, you see me put it here, but um, do you guys have strategic plans out there? Um, do, the forecast that will tell us what opportunities are out there. We can look online and 
And so you see these are sample questions. When I go in and do some research during this video, I'm gonna go see if they have any of these and I'll reference them during the call. Most often the forecast is outdated. And so I'm able to say, hey, I was looking on your website, I see a forecast from like you know, 2002 or, or, you know, or 2018. Where's the current one? How do I get my hands on that? And a lot of times they'll say something like, oh, we're just refreshing it, let me get you it or whatever. Um, so that's why you wanna ask it. Um, from a strategic plans perspective, this is really important, especially if you're um, in any kind of business, you're selling anything that fits more and more into what they're doing, you can begin to learn about their priorities. Uh, we had a call this morning with somebody where um, their role was to support, so this is in the VA, and this, this medical center was uh, referencing a higher ups um, strategic documents or, or strategic vision for how do they communicate with the vet community. Uh, long story short, though, we were asking, it's like, well, you're talking about that. Where can we find that document so we can make sure we're in compliance with what you're looking for? Um, and it's a, a big help to me when I can find strategic documents before going into a call because I can reference their priorities, their objectives, their challenges in the call. You know, I say, hey, I, I noticed here that it says this. Um, how can we help you move forward? Or we think we can help you here. Anyways, so that's bullet two. Bullet three is... Um, and bullet four are kind of the same things. I want to find out how are you procuring it already? So um, prime vendors, uh, if, if they've got large contracts where large firms have it, I want to know that Northrop Grumman has the contract and John Smith at this number in this email is the point of contact. Excuse me. So that's what I'm looking for. Um, what are the top three or four contract vehicles? This is a question you should ask every single time. Um, people talk about doing your homework to find this out. Why? It's like, it's, in, it's so hard to figure this out yourself. But if you're able to call a small business specialist or contracting officer and get them to answer that question in a five minute session, even if it's inside of a 30 minute call, um, if you can get them to answer, now you're walking away going, okay, I get it. You use Oasis, you use a, a Seaport Next Generation, you use Encore, whatever. You're like, all right, there's the contracts you use the most. The reason I want to know that is because now I know who I want to pursue um, from a uh, you know teaming partner relationship. Whoever's on those vehicles, I want to become friends with them or something. Because if if I'm trying to do business with this agency and they buy off of Encore, let's say, then I want to know who's on Encore if I'm not, because that's the only way I'm really going to get some of that business. It's a whole different video, but that's why I asked that question. Um, and by asking that question of the customer, they begin to tell you a little bit more. Um, where should we register? So this is another huge one I like asking because um, I, th I think there's like, you know, maybe five or 10 places where you hear that you're supposed to register, but I go into agency after agency or department after department and there's multiple places, you know, you should be registered in our, in our database here or on our spreadsheet or submit this unique form and, and then we'll keep you informed. It's like, what? You know, although I wish they would do one uh, database like Sam, uh, that's not how they do business. And so I try to ask them, not try to ask them, I try to get them to tell me where do I need to register, whether it's at your level, your office that I'm calling or the higher command, do they have any unique places I'm not aware of that I need to get registered in? So those, those are some of my basic questions. Um, you can see the additional questions down below, but the initial questions, the whole point of these is I will not walk away until I get these questions answered. The additional questions if I'm feeling lucky and this person has given me a lot of information and being really helpful, um, or we cruise through pretty fast, then I'm gonna ask some of these uh, additional questions. When I go into meetings that are not the first meeting, but like they're about opportunities or something else, I have questions that are um, the ones I think I can ask, and then the additional questions are me stretching my luck, if you will. So you always wanna be prepared because if you find somebody who's willing to answer your questions, you better know what questions you wanna answer. Okay, so this is the um, this is my call plan sheet. I'm just going to zoom out again here. I'm going to zoom in. That's what I meant. Um, the call plan sheet. It's a one pager. It's pretty straightforward. During this exercise that I'm about to go through, what I do is I write down any links, any tips, anything I'm thinking in just a uh, kind of a note taking format, and then I'll come back and populate the call plan sheet. This video is not about me populating the call plan sheet. That's separate, it's what I'll do for my customer. What this is about though is showing you how do I go find information when I know nothing about um, this command. I've never worked with this buying command. Uh, I don't know this person, so it's all fresh and I wanna show you 
uh, what I'm going to go through. And so you'll see me come back here and just reference uh, um, this page here. And I might actually just grab this person, grab a couple. So let's get started. I'm just going to start with Google, but I want to put some of this stuff up here. Um, boop. So I don't have to keep going down to the other page is what it really is. Let me grab that. Just put that guy up there as well. And um, so, you know, let's just go to town with this. Uh, so I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna go over here to Google, which is not it. I'm gonna go to Google. Um, this is all I do to start off, right? Is I start at really high level uh, and I screwed it up already, but let me just get rid of that bullet. Um, do that search again. So I'm searching for this person at this command. Um, I don't know if anybody else noticed this, but I just noticed this today. I'm starting to see these icons on Google. It's, it's pretty weird. Um, okay, so I've got this. And now what I want to do is just, uh, you know, take the relevancy. So I went to tools. I'm saying, just show me the past year inside of the internet. I'm looking in the entire internet. Um, so anybody who's got it. And um, so my first thing as I come down is I'm just looking really quick. Do I see anything that pops? And one of the things I noticed is I got way too many words. So let's, let's come back for a second. I'm going to get rid of some of these. And I'm just going to search on this lady's name or this person's name, excuse me. And then C command or however you say that. Uh, so there's no results. They're searching this without it. It's not that person. Okay, I said search. So you're seeing I'm not finding anything, which is fine. Let me, let me try this again. This time I'll get rid of her. Let's try that. Um, so we got articles on it. Uh, I just want to get to their command. So here's their command. Uh, and, and I'm a big fan of opening up a whole bunch of uh, tabs. What I'm looking for, especially, is if I see anybody uh, talking about things. So here's this company. They just got a multiple award. Um, I know who these guys are. Um, so I'm just going to point it up anyways just to see what it is. These are So this is a nice size contract, but it's, yeah, so that, that one's nice because it's, um, well, 37 billion, right? So <laughs> that's good for my customer. They'd be happy getting on a, a team of that. So let's just pull that up for a second. They're, um, they're under material command, I think, which is fine, but I don't need that. Um, and then Aberdeen Proving Ground, pull that up. I think I'm going to pause for a second uh, and just go check out these guys. So this is their site. Um, you saw what I did. I went into Google, just trying to pull up some tabs that can help me begin to do my research. So the first thing is I want to look at um, uh, this person who's in CCOM or SENCOM or whatever it is. Um, and I want to start finding, I'm looking here just at a high level. I don't even know anything about the command. So I'm trying to see what they do. Um, impacts, blah, blah, blah. Repairing equipment, situational awareness, software patches. Uh, so this is the kind of stuff they're looking for, 24-7 help desk. So this is exactly what uh, my customer does. Um, over here, I don't know what this is, C5, and I should, but... So that's hilarious. How great is this website? I don't know if you read this on my video, but it tells us C5 ISR is command, control, computers, communication, cyber, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. Um, so the customer I'm helping do this research for today, this is exactly the world that they're in. Not all of it, but some of those fit directly in what they're doing. So um, sustained readiness is, is where my customer fits. So they, this is an ideal place for them to get in and what they want out of this meeting is to have more meetings. Um, okay, so enable lethality is our business. That's pretty much the Army way now and the uh, DOD way is increased lethality. Um, our bottom line is soldier, what we do best. So this is just a line. I mean, it's great, but it, it ties into the Army one. So I'm not, and when I, if I'm being a little casual about certain things, it's not about their mission or the Army mission. I'm sticking my eyes focused on sales. I'm just trying to figure out what can be good on the call plan sheet. Um, I'm, I'm not in any way making anything about it. So let's look at this. So I know my customer doesn't fit into this world of the depot repair. Field support though, maybe if it's IT. Um, software and hardware engineers, logistics uh, to the field. 
uh, logistics representatives, field service representatives. This part is exactly it. So I'm going to um, come back for a second. And so this guy here, I'm just going to say um, capabilities. And I just want to remind myself which ones I'm seeing. Um, so field services fits in uh, kind of perfect. And, and actually, just for my customer, I'll speed it up by grabbing that and putting it here. Uh, it's hard to type when you're watching. Okay, let me scroll this guy down. Turns out I do need this pin. Sometimes I take the pin out so you guys can have nowhere window space, but I'll zoom in like this. So I'm just taking some stuff in here. I know that the capabilities that I'm seeing of this command, field services fits in, right? Foreign military assistance, I'm not wasting my time. Interoptability certification, probably not. Um, uh, now, I mean, I, I know my customer might be able to touch on that, but I always like them to come in on their strength. And that's just a, a secondary core competency. Logistics, though, they do uh, a lot of that work. Um, cycle support integrates and synchronizes the capabilities throughout the life cycle. Enterprise reach back. You know, this one could be. So I'm going to grab that guy and I'll just put it over there as well. I think I got it right. So it's kind of a promotional pitch for them, but that's all right. Um, software sustainment for sure, right? This is software development, I'm assuming. So provides lifecycle software solutions and services. Software uh, center ensures uninterrupted critical software functions such as license. So this part's really important because they're into cyber, they're into uh, maintaining the network and this all kind of ties to that. Um, SEC executes priority, priority post-production software support. Um, so this is great, let me put that one down. And what was that called? Software sustainment. Okay. Oops. Screwed up my formatting. I can't stand that. Um, okay. So you see the direction I'm going, right? I'm looking in here, trying to see which one fits in. None of that but IT system engineering and integration for sure fits. So, um, so this one's interesting, it provides engineering associated support at army posts camps. This one's huge. This looks like it, it would be, um, and, and I don't know a lot about how the army's doing it nowadays, but if these guys are supporting across multiple army posts, this is a, a, a great opportunity for my customer to get in doing IT uh, network engineering, cyber support and software support um, or software development. So let me just grab this guy because I think this is a good fit. Um, and I'm just going to pull him here a little bit so I can see it better. IT systems engineering and integration. Um, so we'll just pop that in like that. And what, I've, what I can already tell is that I want to grab um, this guy here and put him at the top because it's a higher priority for, um, excuse me, not a higher priority, but it fits more with my customer because they do um, network, this particular customer does network engineering, software development. Okay, so, so all I've looked at is capabilities at the moment. I've got so much more to look at here uh, during this video. I'll go look at some of these other ones in a minute. But the next thing I'm looking for is organization. How is this organization uh, managed? So here's major subordinate commands and centers for, um, for the Army Communication Electronics Command. Um, so this one provides configuration management, system, system system integration, interoperability. I mean, this one's huge for what my customer's trying to do. Um, okay, so what I am seeing though is that there's these different major commands kind of fit in. So um, technical support fits there. Um, software engineering, 
so, so in this particular case, I'm not, I don't want to dig too much up. It's only a 30 minute intro call, but what I can see is there's absolutely a fit. And so what we want to try to do is get some introductions. First thing I can do is uh, just open up some of these fact sheets that I think might fit. This one is system engineering, installation, integration, implementation for IT systems. I mean, this is what they want. So let me hit that fact sheet. I don't care about the logistics at the moment because there's just too much going on, but this one's software engineering. So um, if my customer can get any traction in the door, that'd be good. I am going to open up one of these pages just to look at it. So the technical support. Um, and then that's it. I want to stay on this one page for a second before I show you, I move forward to the rest. So um, I don't care about leadership at the moment. Here's office of small business. So let's open that guy. Um, some of the publications I'm going to open. This one's interesting. I see that error. So I'm going to come back here because it was the small business office. And no, nope, so they're having a problem with their, uh, their office which is ironic since that's who we're trying to talk to, right? Okay, um, and then contact, I'm just looking. So down at the below, uh, I just looked to see if, if somehow you can come in here and there's this gold mine of uh, points of contact, but there's not. It's just generic information here. Um, so that was contact us, careers, capabilities we did, Hall of Fame. Uh, Hall of Fame, I'm just gonna look at to see if they're, it's what they think. Um, no, so here they're just talking about who's made, uh, you know, who's, who's done a great job before. Um, let me back up out of that. I'm going to leave that guy open for a second. I want to come. Uh, I like this one. This. <laughs> so uh, I don't even know which one this is. Army page under construction. It had to be. Uh, wasn't leadership. It had to be publications, I think. Nope. So we'll come back to that. I don't know what page was under construction. Um, I was opening them too fast. So here's the one I just did. And okay, so let's look at, oh, so maybe it's the commands. Oh, these are the fact sheets. Okay, so let me bring it back to the fact sheets um, right here. So I looked at these three different capabilities, right? And these three documents, I'll make sure my customer has, they're two pages of the basic facts about what this organization does, uh, this, this is CIO C6 or G6. It's exactly who my customer wants to get in and talk to, right? You don't need to get in there right away, but you need to know who you're trying to get to so that you can ask the right questions of this small business person, for example, who's in there. Um, it, this, isn't a, this call I can already see is designed to be the first of several calls with this particular point of contact who's a small business specialist, but also getting introductions into some of these offices, getting introductions into the primes like I talked about. Um, so here it goes into what they're, uh, the work they're doing, which is really helpful for my customer's team to look at this and go, well, which ones do we wanna be asking a lot of questions at? So configuration management's a big one, um, uh, especially as it relates to um, the Army's network sites, et cetera. And then engineering services. This is, if I'm following it correctly, let me just read it. Um, maintaining tech, uh, tactical architecture and interoperability. Endpoint security systems, verification validation. Um, assistance with some of the other programs. In-house programs. So um, configuration management. This is all in their world, the engineering services. So um, they would want to be finding out how do we learn more? Is there a strategic IT document? And I'm going to go back in a minute and look for that. Uh, so here's the core competencies of this organization. They're managing the, uh, the baseline, technical assessments on hardware and applications. So I'm going to come back to those guys because they're a big one. Let me scroll back up so you see it. Um, you're in, and let me pause too, because again, I'm not trying to get you to understand the information. I'm trying to get you to understand how do I go find information to prepare me for a call? Because when I go into this call, my goal, and, and you're seeing how long I'm taking, I won't spend more than an hour preparing for this first call. And I'll have so much more knowledge than the average person I talk to because I look at these documents, because I understand what's out there. Um, this Army Information Engineering Command, I'm gonna look at that one really quick just to see if it fits. So this one's really interesting to me because they inter integrate strategic communication at Army Post. And to me, that's like all Army Post. And there's hundreds of those. And so the potential upside of revenue or, or um, money being spent on this is huge, which means there's room for my customer to fit in there. 
you know, at the $1 million, $5 million, $10 million mark without any uh, challenge because there's that much money being spent on IT across the Army. Um, okay, so there's supporting readiness. Engineering IT solutions, that's a big deal, big place to play in. Um, so this stuff is good. I'm looking at this. And again, now this one's cool. So if you're not really familiar with the way any organization is, is they just keep breaking it down. It doesn't matter what the words are. If you think about the Department of Defense, it has the Department of Navy, Department of Army. And then if you go into the Department of Navy, for example, or in this case, the Army, you know, you get a command like this uh, CECOM or command. And, um, you know, in, inside of that command, they have this UAIC, uh, you know, whatever it is. I can't remember. Hold on. Uh, subcommands. So major subordinate command is what the UAIC is, right? Is one of those. And then inside of there, you have directorates. And in the directorate, you're trying to find out where do I fit? And this is what the government means when they say, do your homework. Who buys what we sell or um, who within our organization buys what you sell? So in here, I can look at this and say, well, I don't really care about maybe um, the, the engineering directorate, but I do care about you know, coming down here, well, actually, I do care about the engineering director. This one says deliver IT planning, engineering, and implementation. That's exactly who they would want to be talking to. Um, and actually, to me, each one of these directorates, if I go do more research, which I will in a second, and actually, let me just show it to you here. If I come back here to the major subordinate commands, and I was looking at the USAIC uh, Information Systems Command, that's this guy. So I only looked at the fact sheet, right? So it's given us that two page highlight. But if I go to their site now, let's go to town and see what we can find there. Um, so I'm coming in here and now they've got a whole nother site that I can dig down into. Um, some of my questions would be, okay, so I can already see that one of my questions, and I just want to take a note of this, is to find out, um, you know, can I, and I'll come back and refine this later. So I'm doing it raw with you. But can I get, access to the um, subordinates, subordinate commands, and the, um, and, what, and directorates, and directorate uh, points of contact, right? Uh, so it's just reminding me that I want to, that I want to get down into here. I mean, these are the people who are doing the job. These are the people we want to be talking to. We'll hear about current opportunities that have been awarded and who's got them and maybe we can get on their team. We'll also hear from some of these people about, hey, it's coming out in the next year or two or three years. And so now we're aware of it. You know, we start getting into our um, business development or capture activities. And for a small business, it's totally a different approach than it is for larges, but it still comes down to just being aware. Anyways, here I'm on the, um, remember the Army Communication Electronic Command. That was these guys here that I saw with, Oh, wait a minute. So U.S. Army Information Systems Engineering Command. Is that what I just pulled up? Oh, oh so, that, so that's the higher one. And then here it is. Sorry about that. Um, see, here, see here, it describes what's in there. And what I'm looking for is, first thing I'm looking for is just uh, what do they have? I'm going to check out Small Business Partner. Look at this one. This is stuff I like to see. Here's, uh, I'll bring that one up in a second. Um, I don't really need, look at this, core capabilities, cybersecurity, cloud networking. Those three fit right into, in, in enterprise infrastructure, right into exactly what my customer's trying to get to. So they need to be getting into this office or this directory, excuse me. Um, or I guess that's a subordinate command. Um, I did the small business one. I got the fact sheet. I do want to just check the contact out. And let's come back here to capabilities really quick. So you see, I'm popping really fast because uh, pretty much I know what I'm doing, but I also don't want to let myself get caught up reading everything. I'm just trying to prepare for a call to make sure I know what I'm talking about and where I want to get in, you know? So, hey, um, uh, you know, however you say the person's name, um, I, I really want to get into this subordinate command because these, uh, this information fits right into our world, cybersecurity. Um, okay, so they don't have a lot of information there. Let's just take networking too. So LAN, WAN, this is all uh, what my customer fits into. Um, this is the capabilities. It's just laying them out a little bit more so you can see it. The key thing for um, the key thing for my customer when they go in is they want to make sure that, that the small business specialist or whoever knows that they did their homework. And when they can reference these pages and the information, uh, it's showing that they've done the homework. 
All right, let's come over here really quick to the, uh, uh, but, but, uh, some, some of these documents I pulled up. So this one here, it talks about the, and, and I'm sorry, let me pause over here so I put us on the same page. Okay, so this is the Office of Small Business for, um, I don't know what APG is, I already got a little confused there. But okay, so it's combining the communities. Um, but let's go ahead and see what they got here. Uh, we got a trifold biz folder, so I'm gonna open that guy. Um, here I'm just coming down. It's really generic stuff here. Uh, I actually don't see anything there on the home page. Here's their goals and statistics. That's nice. Let's just look really quick to see. Uh, my customer I'm helping at the moment is a hub zone and woman owned uh, firm. So I can look here and see that this is my favorite thing where they set the goal 2% below the federal goal. Um, you know, it's, there's no reason. This one's really telling though. Uh, they're at 18%. The federal goal is 23% and they can't even hit that. That's um, there's something wrong with the way <laughs> that they're doing this. I say that softly, but it's like, I would love to find out why they think they're not hitting that goal. Um, so here they're talking about um, their economic input is always important. Uh, this is kind of helpful, right? They're uh, uh, 12 billion, 12 billion and 32 actions, I guess. This is just, um, you know, some of the facts about them, but it's not really helpful to me. Uh, here, let's see what their small business resources are. This is just external stuff, uh, so I'm not looking at it. Um, this one is too bad. This is two years old, or at least a year old. We'll come back to that in a minute, but the events, let's see what they got. This is a sign of how, uh, how much they're really paying attention to small business. This here, by the way, just, you know, a little bit, when you see FY18 events on a small business site of the Department of Army, and then you come over here and you look at their statistics and you wonder why they're only getting 18%, well, perhaps it's because they're not actually really trying to communicate with industry and especially small businesses. Um, I know that's a little tough love type statement, but uh, there's no excuse for not hitting it, especially when your current site is uh, saying 2018. But doesn't matter, we move on, right? Let's go, I wanted to look at that one thing this was an industry day, so this is really helpful about how to, they were doing how to do business stuff. And I'm assuming these things have already happened, um, but I always look to see if they've got decks. So it is a PowerPoint, let's open it. Um, coming down here. So here's financing goals, whatever that is, but uh, strategic sourcing and responding to requests for proposals. So th this is the one I want to see. So hopefully that one will look good when it opens up. Let's come over here. Here's their trifold. I look in here and um, this is really fun for me to see. So if I zoom in here, it says, who do we support? Um, so I've, I've gone a little bit off track of where we're at. And I'm going to get off of this because this is no longer the small business for um, the CENCOM people. It's for Aberdeen specifically. But I am going to look really quick, just see if there's anything in these slides that could be helpful. Um, you can see me doing another research. Um, okay, well, so here's, so here's kind of the structure of it, which is interesting. I hadn't seen it, but uh, you've got the commanding general and deputy commanding uh, generals here. Executive director is there for pretty much ever. Office of Small Business Programs. Okay, I see. So what this person here, which is a good person to try to reach out to, um, she, Andrea, um, I believe is probably the APG's uh, small business director who then supports all of these commands, which makes sense why we're in there. So I'll keep there for a second. Um, let's keep on going down. We got 20 slides. And again, I'm just cruising through fast trying to find out stuff that could really drive us forward. Um, here they're just talking about innovation. I don't want to be going too far because it's a little too crazy. Um, this is her saying who they support. This is some of their 2018 objectives, which really doesn't mean anything to me. Um, I'm just moving fast because I don't, I'm not trying to do the whole army stuff. Um, so here's one, uh, here's your small business professional contact list. So I know my customer has got a meeting with uh, this person coming up and, um, and that's it. Oh, so there's two pages and, um, and with this person uh, here. It's funny, nothing's highlighting, but Stacy. So this is a good list. This is a list from 2018. 
Um, I think the list that my customers going off of is actually from 2016. So I'll leave this deck open. These, uh, the reason I leave it open is because I'll have uh, these names and numbers put back into my customers, uh, person who does the first calls. They do the outreach to try to, try to schedule interviews, uh, excuse me, introduction calls. And um, you know, here's, what is this, like 10 new names that they can use, which can help them get in uh, 10 or 12 names, get them farther in. And so we can do a little more prep. That's great uh, to have those. Um, okay, so let me come back here. So I was looking at this and I was kind of blowing it off because it didn't seem like it was that helpful. And let me just see if there's anything on here really that. Um, no, the rest of this stuff is really generic, so I'm gonna ignore it. Uh, I'm actually just gonna get rid of it. Um, here, we already opened that, so that was good. And I'm done looking at that one. Uh, this one was just, you know, how you get information, uh, nothing special, so I'm gonna get rid of that. Okay, so this was the uh, CENCOM or CECOM. Anybody knows how to pronounce it, you go ahead and put it in the comments. I'd love to hear it. Um, but here's the part I, I love to find, and, and you might see me put a separate video on this out. Um, seven pages about their focus 2020, right? Um, so, okay, so here's their vision. Here's their commanding general. I'm gonna look really quick briefly to see if, um, what he's talking about. So the imperative is never been greater. Leader and the whole uh, soldiers look to for credit. So this, I mean, this, this is hugely important for anybody in IT, right? Uh, Multi-domain operations, that's pretty standard for that. Um, engagement with Futures Command, network cross-functional teams, blah, blah, blah. Um, so they're headquartered in Maryland, so that's a big deal, trying to find anybody out there being able to set meetings up. Uh, works as a global team through its network of six regional support centers. Okay, so I, um, this kind of thing, the minute I see this, I go, okay, I need to find out who are the six regional support centers. Uh, you know, I don't really care about the field offices around the world, but those regional support centers are uh, big hubs for these guys, and that's important. That could be just their major commands that they're talking about, uh, and it'll probably say it in the document. Um, depot level repairs, closer to the soldier. Okay, optimizing supply availability. You know, that's all good stuff. There you go. So he's just talking about how great it is um, in, in the direction. Okay, so whether they're doing vehicles or updating software, they're there 24 seven, got it. Um, and by the way, th this stuff is important too, as my customer moves forward and they're writing responses, they wanna be referencing language that's being used by this commander as an example, because everybody else is tracking on this same kind of language. This theoretically is the command's um, talking points, if you will. Okay, as the nature of warfare evolves, it focuses on smaller, more dispersed units, um, they're responsible here. So that's why you want small businesses. We're more nimble, right? Um, CENCOM priorities, CECOM, not CENCOM, CECOM or whatever. Uh, okay, so this is vital for my customer to understand. What are the priorities in 2020? Um, fleet readiness, which, you know, I would have thought was a, uh, a Navy thing, but of course the Army has, I think, more ships. Um, discover software vulnerabilities. This probably isn't one that they fit in, so let me keep moving forward. Um, figure out how to sustain new systems, ensure they're safe, adapt the way we work, make sure we can communicate, coordinate, and then focus on um, uh, Futures Command, ensure they have the right capabilities down, down range. So that one, uh, customer kind of fits in. And then staff or command with the best people from all backgrounds, ensure the workforce is trained, provide mentorship and career challenge leadership. Um, it's really interesting on these priorities. I didn't see integration of industry, which uh, would have been kind of, I mean, uh, interesting to me. Okay, so I mentioned that he said uh, downrange. So you've got the Army Material Command and here's this, and this is what he was talking about, I think. These are the regionals. So these are the ones to pay attention to. Um, and these are the ones I was just talking about that are uh, the ones to look at and go, which ones are a fit? Now that I see them, I would say every single one of them are worth talking to. I would bet a lot of what my customer sells the government is not procured by the Army Depot, but those guys get it from somewhere else. But it's still worth a call because, um, you know, if you want to get into communications electronics command, knowing these subordinate commands is a pretty important thing. But so this sheet's really important to me. So um, when you call a customer, the customer's going to want to know that you know the basics of how they're structured, right? Um, you have a general idea of what we buy. Of course, they're going to buy IT services. 
but um, you know, there's certain commands that buy certain things. Uh, Nav C buys uh, deals with boats and or the water, and Nav Air deals with um, air. And here it's the same thing. So you want to go in, you know, having this knowledge at your head, or at least print it out right in front of you so you can talk to it. Um, okay, so let's look at this hardware software critical uh, complements. Um, I don't know what it means yet. And I'm going to read it, but that caught my eye because hardware software is where my customer plays. So um, increasing operational readiness is a huge thing. Um, overhauling and resetting their systems. So this is just, uh, this is either just one location. I don't know if I missed it somewhere, but that's pretty specific to be talking about the Army Depot. Um, So a lot of this stuff, um, a lot of this stuff, my customer would probably have to dig into deeper. It's getting past my technical skills. But one thing I do notice is that here it's talking about um, the systems, and I don't understand why it's saying top ten systems and then having a number. Oh, I know. So the the top ten are here, but I, I'm assuming. But as they go forward into FY 2020, they're looking at you know 399 systems. If I'm reading this correctly, it's telling me there's a lot more systems that they're dealing with, which theoretically they need more resources to support. One of my questions is, who can I talk to to learn more about these systems? And so having a specific question really helps a, a small business specialist or whoever get you to the next person. Um, okay, so let's look at here. Uh, this is talking about uh, exactly what I was just saying, the volume of systems. This is really important phrase. The volume of systems in the inventory is this astounding. Um, that's that's the government saying it's astounding. And that's another word for it's overwhelming, all right? It's amazing how many systems we have. Um, and so uh, the growing task of ensuring these systems are ready and operational lie with these guys. My customer can help you keep those systems up and running. Um, in fact, they keep hundreds of systems sustained at, at an incredible, that tells me they're proud of 97% readiness rate um, for their entire life cycle. Um, to, to, to ensures the supply chain of replacement parts, et cetera. So these guys are moving forward. This is a lot on the supply side as well, but um, here we're talking about uh, just the repairs. This is something my customer can dig into more than me. I'm looking for the ones that drop out. None of the hardware can operate without underlying software. This is where CCOMs or whatever. Uh, and so you remember that other major subordinate command software engineering center, um, they play a critical role. They're talking about it. This also means our adversaries are constantly poking, so cybersecurity. Um, so include fixing the problems because software is always going up and down uh, and ensuring they can go up and down. So right here, for example, this of this entire document so far, I'm like, you guys really seem to fit strongly in software engineering in, in particular. Um, enabling electronic patching and tactical systems must be a big part of what they're doing. Uh, <laughs> this, this is actually an amazing statement. They're even saying it. They want to reduce the latency of snail mail distribution. I, it never even occurred to me that anybody is using a mail system um, on distribution when they've got such uh, strong networks these days and secure networks. Okay, so crucial network connectivity. Um, interact with mobile devices, et cetera, or take for granted. They work seamlessly. So here is something, it says at Fort Hood, this facility acts as a virtual proving ground. So my customer might wanna get in there. I also have another customer who does, uh, a, their primary focus is mobile. And now that I see this, I might throw this document their way and say, hey, you guys should take a look. Um, so validating the command tactical software applications work together, that's critical. So as it continues to move up and downstream. Um, at home or in the field, they enjoy the benefits. Well, they, so here they're doing stories. So here they're talking about the next subordinate command, right? And I think that was the guy here, um, information, information Systems Engineering Command. So that, that was the one I was looking at that looked really good. Um, and so, so, so far of this big document, I really like this one, this one here, which goes into software engineering, and this one here. And so what I'll talk to my customer about is you want to reference this uh, CECOM Focus 2020 document. I was reading that document. And um, on page five, 
I really saw a fit between what was being described on page five for the Software Engineering Center, as well as page six for the Information Systems Engineering Command. Um, so I'd like to explore those more. And when you talk that way, you're going to communicate clearly to the person on the other side of the line that you've done your homework and you're ready to move to the next level. And there's a big difference between that and the people who just call and say, hey, I was looking for a contract award. Um, you know, I do software and I'm a, a hub zone company or something. Okay, so let's look at this last one, pivotal industry partnerships. Um, we depend on industry partners. So they engage them through the Army Command, the Buying Command. So, so this, is the, uh, this is how they contract it, basically. Um, and these are the guys with the needs, CECOM. So it's responsive, streamlined. So you need, my customers need to get down to that level. Um, State-of-the-art technology, blah, blah, blah. So here we get into world-class talent. They're talking about what they really like. Um, logistics assistants and field service representatives. This is a strength of my customer. And they do this a lot internally with the government. One of the things contractors bring is um, an industry brings this continuity. So, you know, our people tend to get on a contract and stay there forever uh, until the contract goes away. Um, you know, this is an important thing. So, uh, okay, none of this is possible without the people at the heart of the soul. Uh, here they're just talking about how they're taking care of their people and um, they're moving them forward. I want to pause for a second, just give you a tip that I use because this is um, – uh, really interesting. First off, notice right here in the middle that they, they describe certain terms of their people. If you were writing a response, it might be wise to use like a, a kind of a snippet of their graphic to your own graph that kind of um, crosswalks the way they talk about their people to the way you describe a labor category. But that's not what I was going to say. Um, what I was going to say is about people. Ah, sorry, I missed it. Okay, so we'll move on. Um, and then the last, we're so on page six. So our path, so here, our path forward. Um, okay, so I was wondering what, how they described 5321. According to these guys, um, the life cycle sustainment approach to support this contract, uh, central warranty exchange for non standard. This new framework is called 54321 or 531, excuse me. Um, Supported by network sustainment, it's kind of, so five refers to the five-year warranty that they're looking for. Uh, three to the, three refers to the decision point when the Army will decide if it sustains the equipment's use uh, after the initial period. Well, that's interesting. And if yes, it'll decide the entity. So, oh, I know what I was going to say is you want to be demonstrating yourself as a SME. That's what I was trying to refer to up there. And it's great that down here, I just read it. These people, they're switching jobs. Most of them are military. and so. Um, when they're switching jobs, they don't have the same luxury as industry to really deep dive into the profession because, um, you know, in the army, everybody's a rifleman or a rifle person, right? So everybody's carrying a rifle in the army. That means they have to be proficient in a, with a rifle as well as with network engineering. You only have to be proficient with network engineering as an example, right? So you want to get out there with social media and help these guys understand what is the cutting edge of technology this is one way people can differentiate themselves. Just a quick sidebar on this video is make sure you're putting out a video or a topic, just like I am now, put out something like this once a month, once a week, um, whatever you and your team can do. But that just talks about cloud, where the clouds go and it talks about the challenges with patching or something. These folks are looking for experts to find, uh, to provide some of that answers. And before they contract with you or contract with you, they're going to Google and they're going, Hey Google, how do I patch? Or, you know, what's some of the best practices today on patching? So con consider that. And that's kind of um, the same thing here. When they talk about this warranty, I'd be curious on how they're making decisions on the warranty. Anyways, my customer, for example, could be providing some, some uh, thoughts into that kind of a thought leadership role, if you will, for the government when they're at that three year period. And then um, they will decide who's responsible for sustainment, blah, blah, blah. Um, it'll divest. So one refers to the central warranty. So here, the 531 is just talking about warranty. It's interesting. You should be aware of it. And so that's the end of this. So this document was really helpful. And just as a reminder, I, I found this section for crucial, crucial network connectivity and this section here on software engineering uh, to be really helpful. So I'm going to make sure I get that back into the questions I'm preparing for my customers. So I'll leave that one open. Um, let's come back here. So this was the uh, the small business office, there was no real value to me today 
in this. As we move forward, there could be. Um, coming here, so this one is huge. I'm gonna leave this open because this is one of the main ones I wanna get my customer into. So I'm gonna shape some questions around um, uh, what's, what's here, you know, what they have. I don't know if I actually found leadership, by the way, because um, this, did I get taken somewhere else? I get taken to Facebook. I don't want to be on Facebook. Um, I mean, it's, it's great that she won the award, but what I'm really looking for is leadership. Like who, who are the, uh, who's in charge of this unit, et cetera. So I'm not really seeing anything at the moment. That might be a question I ask is, um, let's try resources for 500. Ah, maybe that was the one that I was trying to reach. So, okay. So that's something I can do, right? Is I could say, I really want to dig farther into the, um, information, what did I call it? Information systems engineering command. I really want to dig farther into those people, but I, I can't see anybody. Can you, can you help me get an introduction in there? Um, and then uh, publications. So here's another part, and I don't know how far I've been recording this, actually. Let me check my time. Okay, I think I'm doing all right. And, and really, the, again, this is designed to be a raw video. If you're watching this, it's as if I'm sitting there trying to coach you. How do you find out the most before a meeting? And I'm basically sitting at an hour, right? So, um, but here, this one's really important. I go in, I try to find their publications in an organization. Um, so this is the command's monthly newsletter. I don't know what it is, so let's go ahead and take a look at it. Um, just click on that. And then the fact sheet, I don't know if I opened that already, but let's click on that. We did the focus, excuse me. Here's another gem. Um, their human capital strategic plan. So I can go ahead and click on that. And then empowering strategic support area readiness. What is this? Um, Okay, so it's interesting, but it's outside the scope of what I'm trying to do. So let me come back um, to the dash. So the dash is, uh, I don't know what dash is, right? But it's, these newsletters are awesome to find out information, um, you know, that these guys think is important. And so this is December, I'm assuming it's monthly, right? I think we just read that. So um, here they're spreading wreaths across. They bid farewell to the Sergeant Major. See you later, Sergeant Major. Um, sometimes you can look in and see if, you know, it's, if this person's being, leaving and somebody else coming in and taking the role, it's really important to me if it fits into the IT sector. But enhanced AIE being tested. Um, automated installation entry. Got it. That's interesting to know. Um, and then ISIC serves the Army distribute, let's say, Information Systems Engineering Command, the one we like. One of the five subordinate elements serves as the Army Distribution Testing Lab um, to ensure the communication needs to be met with functional secure network infrastructure. In 2008, there was a backlog of commercial off-the-shelf products seeking replacement. So this one here, I don't know, if, am I supposed to click on something? Because, oh, that's funny. I guess it goes in farther. Ah, got it. So they got a blog. <laughs> so, you know, it takes a minute to kind of figure it out. Um, so let's kind of go down here. JIDIC simply could not maintain the constant, consistent, uh, constantly increasing demand without accruing a black backlog. I'm assuming they're saying they got to it. Um, so this, for me, this doesn't really fit, but this is a really good one for you to, to be able to see where it fits in. We just did a call, or we're about to do a call with somebody at Crane. Um, so it's good to pop in here into this archive and search maybe some stories too. This isn't a path I've followed before. And it's one I, I've obviously seen army blogs before, but it never occurred to me when I'm doing my research to just come to the very top level of a department and search, you know, search for something. Um, usually I go to the command and I poke around in there. Um, anyways, okay, so let's cancel that. This one here was the one that said um, the domains. So this is good. The one of the best places to start is right over here where it says uh, CCOM domains. Um, this is where you want to sit there and be able to tell whoever you're talking to, hey, I was looking at the domains, and this is where we fit, um, which is hilarious because looking at this, I don't see where they fit. So this is a different kind of an approach um, for the communication electronics. Um, let's come down to this next level. 
Okay, so maybe, maybe if we fit in here then, uh, support to readiness, and we read this, and we already read this, right? So we're able to look at this and go, we know we support these guys um, and some of these others. So we went through that exercise. Now I'm looking over here to see what they put here. Um, this is a conversation they're talking about, but look at this. Strategic priorities, I don't know what year this is. Um, let me just look really quick. I don't see a, uh, I don't see a year anywhere at the moment. And some of you might be seeing it a lot faster than me, but yeah, I don't see a year, but it doesn't matter. Let's just assume it's kind of current. Um, well, this thing here is pretty awesome because it helps you understand. And if you haven't done this in the federal government, as you get time and revenue, right? Don't do this when you have five people or less. Um, you're really just trying to get a, you know, some early revenue. But as you move forward, you're really trying to become an expert on an agency. You need to understand how it all fits together. They're, they're doing exactly that as they lay this stuff out. Um, coming across from the Secretary of the Army to the uh, Chief Staff of the Army priorities to these major commands um, and then coming over to uh, AMC and, and, and what I think we saw on these guys' um, uh, priorities. And then if you come down here on the bottom, you'll see the same thing for C5 ISR's readiness, um, you know, future force. This is still kind of the stuff they're talking about, right? Um, but you see their objectives and where you can fit in. Um, and I'm just looking to see. So this one here is awesome. And what I would, what I would, uh, what I will do, and I know I'm going to do it, so I don't have to write a note, but I'll, I'm going to leave this one open. But where it says strategic priorities, what I'm going to ask uh, the person on the call or have my customer ask is, uh, they're clearly our strategic priorities. And those came out of a strategic plan. Could we get a copy of the current strategic plan? That strategic plan will open your eyes about um, uh, CECOM. Okay, so let me look over here. This is the last one we had. So this was the human capital strategic plan for the last two years and 24 pages. I'm just gonna cruise through really quick to here because it's not IT, but I do wanna see this. One thing I always uh, review when I see it are challenges. So right there, it's talking about challenges they face. And then goals and objectives are a good one, but certainly challenges, because anytime you see challenges, then you should be talking about how you can address those challenges, um, even if it's subliminal, right? If the challenge is, um, uh, I don't have enough food, in your proposal or in your writings or any of that stuff, you can talk about how we always try to make sure there's enough food available for so-and-so. You don't out and out say that, I know that you don't have food, I can bring you food. But when you, when you allude to the solution to the challenge, um, it really goes forward. Sometimes you can directly talk to the challenge. Um, okay, so uh, this is civilian court creed, which I always love. Brings them together with the overall army. So let's get down to the um, so the strategic lines of effort. We already talked about this. I'm looking for the challenges. I should have did the page. So here's the challenges that they have. Um, and this is something I was referring to, right? They en endure unpredictable challenges excuse me, un, unpredictable disruptions. So when the civilian and military force uh, in the army, you know, this uh, personnel in the army get these unpredictable disruptions, they have to go solve it. So part of what we do is provide the support that enables them to go do that. So if we're backfilling them, if we're doing whatever, so making yourself, fitting yourself in there is gonna allow them to accomplish the mission downstream. Um, but understanding how you fit in, you know, when you communicate something or when you're talking about something, um, you just want to understand their challenges. So you're not going in blind. Anyway, so t -t -t talent management, recruiting. So they're having problems. So this is another good one. The average age is 48 years old. Um, so retirement is a big one. So retirement is when they begin to lose institutional knowledge. The challenge is compounded by they don't plan on a bench of talent it needs to recruit. This is why this is a way that you know, industry can get in and really get ourselves seen as the value. We're institutional knowledge that just kind of continues on and um, that's some, something helpful. So civilian hiring is a big challenge of theirs to try to reduce it. Performance management. Um, oh, so this is something a little bit outside of my, thing. I, I thought it meant managing their ability to perform, but it's different. They're, this is just like role-based it looks like. Um, training the workforce. How can you come in and help them train the workforce? Knowledge management is another big one, right? Is um, when you look at your, the challenges of an agency and you're writing, and I know I'm going a little off script here, but, and you're talking about things, it's like, 
hey, we can address these challenges. If you understand what challenges they have and you can write to it, then you begin to speak their language. And that's why I'm going through this and saying, find their documents and dig into them. Um, okay, so if you wanted to you come in here and see all their, um, uh, the details on this document, I'm not really digging into it because, well, actually, let me scroll into one. Um, so here's some of their objectives. So if you're in training and some of the stuff for deal with personnel, this is a great document. I'll leave it open for a review later, but I don't need to finish it with you. Um, okay, so that's those guys. Um, I think I went through everything. I went through these guys. I'm going to leave it open. Publication I dealt with. Um, SEC, so this is the software one, fixing user stuff. I mean, this is all uh, perfect for what my customer does. And it gives them the right questions asked. So I'll be able to pull questions out of this document. Um, you know, and again, you can watch a different video. I do it a different day. This video is all about just how do I find out what to talk about? How do I prepare? Well, this is how you do it. Um, a question of mine is definitely going to be, there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six SEC directorates. How do I learn more about them? Is there an SEC strategic document I can get my hands on? Who in SEC can I talk to? Um, you know, it's our job as salespeople. And if you're in a, in a, if you're in a business, you're in sales, but if you're in leadership or in the business development side of it, you're in sales and we need to be pulling these answers out of whoever. Um, you can be guaranteed that the people inside the incumbents already have a lot of this information. So we talked about those two, um, uh, central technical support facility. I'm looking at the same thing. It's configuration management, engineering, et cetera. Um, so these three fact sheets are great things for me to have my customer have on hand uh, because they want to know what to talk to and how to kind of push people in a, in a good direction. Um, Aberdeen, so we did this Aberdeen Proven Ground. Let's take a look to see if um, what we got in it. So, um, so this thing is, uh, it's big and it's, let me scroll out. And it's so cool because there's so much stuff in here. Um, there's 34 pages. I'm going to go through it pretty fast. What I'm showing you first off is that I just found a, a planning brief. And I think that thing came from like their, their resources or publications. So you just want to dig in there and find it. But as we scroll down, I'm going to stop whenever I see something that catches my eye. eye. Um, but the first thing I, I quickly see is, okay, so um, this is who I'm talking with, CECOM. And uh, okay, so instantly I see that they're talking about opportunities in here. So that's great. Um, let's see what kind of information they got. Um, well, look at this. So I instantly got somebody's name. I have no idea who it is and I don't care. It's a point of contact. Right? And so whenever I have a point of contact, even if you have a 10 minute meeting, you know, reaching out to some of these people or something. Now I could put this into Google and go find out who Lindsay is, but at the moment I don't care because this is cables and equipment. So I want to keep going um, and see like this one field support, $900 million contract. I know my contract, my customer would be interested in this. So like uh, Michael Fusco, let's just go grab his name, get him out on Google. Um, and then I'll just put it on me. Uh, so here he is. He's a contracting officer. I don't need to do a lot more. Uh, well, let's go see him. He's on LinkedIn. <laughs> um, and, and again, another, another sidebar. We get some sidebars here. So I see a lot of things right away that this person is in my backyard. They're in Maryland, but he only has 67 connections and nothing else. But he's been a contracting officer out there forever. So I don't need to look a lot more. Um, I, anytime I come here though, I always follow somebody just if they post something, I can see it. But more importantly, um, I'll also be able to, uh, it, LinkedIn just notifies them that I'm following them. So it's a little, little strategic way of seeing it. Let me find where, where was that one? Got too many tabs open. I think I have so many tabs open. It might freeze on me. Um, so grounds maintenance service, hardware life cycle maintenance. This one's important one, uh, but it's really small. You see this? Um, so it doesn't matter, but, and it just got awarded. So I'm going to skip on by, uh, past it. If I wanted another person to introduce our company to, I could to David Humfleet because he probably is a contracting officer responsible for it buys, um, cell phone. I'm skipping. Here's resource management administration. Okay, so that was, 
Uh, so here's the integrated logistics support. Now I'm going to go through a little bit faster to see if I find uh, the next group is what I'm really looking for. So I'll just hold on as I scroll. Dizzy for me too, folks. This is an old, older uh, uh, brief. I want to find out, you know, where's your current forecast? So um, application software sustainment. So this one's khaki, right? So this one, I might reach out to Candy and say, Candy, can you introduce me to khaki? Um, the program manager, phone number uh, kind of thing, because that's a $50 million one. You know they're using smalls. Do they have enough smalls? Here's a, you know, billion dollar contract almost. I would reach out to Katie for the same reason. Oh, and this is on CIO SP3. So we move past that. Um, and let's see what else we got here running. So here they're just talking about their way ahead and some of the stuff they're doing. Awarded uh, IT hardware maintenance. This is perfect. So even if you can't get it now, uh, it's a really tiny contract too. So <laughs> uh, it's an incredibly small contract for uh, support. Um, I'm hoping it went total small. It better have gone total small. But either way, so you saw me go through that. And then the last one I had open, the last two, um, were just these. You saw me use this to, to, you know, ask the government, could you introduce me to the, um, you know, the prime small business liaison officer or the program manager or whoever. And same thing with Next Point. Um, they got onto a, uh, oh, so they're a subcontractor to uh, uh, assets, I think it's called. Um, so trying to reach out to them, it's a $16 billion contract. It's worth reaching out, but, um, you know, the, the key reaching out to, uh, asset, not this next point company. Um, but just saying, Hey, we were talking with these guys over in CECOM and we'd like to talk with you anyways, long video. Um, I'm kind of done talking and most importantly, I got what I needed to prepare my customer for the call. Uh, ironically it's tomorrow, right? So I'm recording it today so I can make it available for you. But everything I do to prepare in a call, uh, when, when my customer is going to be calling and having these questions ready for, uh, to guide the conversation and to move it along in the direction we want and to get some uh, tangible next steps, you know, like let me set up a meeting, let me get you this document, et cetera. Um, that's the, remember, remember, success is what we're looking for in a meeting. Well, all this research we just did led to that. And if you're setting up a meeting, do the same thing. Take uh, 30 to 60 minutes, two hours, whatever, and dig through to try to find it. Um, a meeting like this is worth two or three hours easily because uh, there's so many places you could go. Um, but then shape your questions. And let me just come back really quick to the uh, call and sheet, right? Is just shape your questions so it, uh, you know, as you walk in, oops, a little too much scrolling. Um, as you walk in, you've got your objective and you got the questions you want to ask. And, and most importantly, you come away achieving those objectives when they're written down. So hope you found this uh, whole video valuable. It's Neil Raw. So, so uh, you know, seeing me bounce around, but government contracting, it's not a secret. It's just a process. And part of the process is getting your hands dirty as you're digging for gold. In this case, the gold is information. Go make it happen.